Matthew Jacobson here, and I am back after two years. In fact, it's been two years to the day today since I posted a video to my channel. I'm going to talk about a Baccarat side bet today. It's called the Five Treasure Side Bet, and there has been some rumblings inside the industry that there's a lot of uh, advantage play against this side bet. So I want to talk you through it and show you exactly what the vulnerabilities are, give you some ideas on how to protect the game, and show you a little bit of software that I've created that might help you out here. So let's just get right into it. So the Bakra Five Treasures side bet consists of five side bets. And the thing is that each one of these side bets can be card counted. Some are more vulnerable than others. And so I want to take you through the way we can beat each side bet individually, then talk about team play. So let's just get right into that. The five side bets are called the Fortune Seven, the Golden Eight, the Heavenly Nine, the Blazing Sevens, and the Cover All. So first of all, the Fortune Seven or otherwise known as the Dragon Seven, if you've been around for a while, that was the name of it on the original Easy Baccarat where it was featured. That wins if the banker has a winning three card total of seven. It pays 40 to one and the house edge is 7.611%. This was sort of the first big Bakra side bet that made the splash that, hey, some side bets are countable. And the counting system is very trivial and uh, hopefully it's well known to you already. So to card count this, the tags will count the four, five, six, and sevens as minus one. The eights and nines is two, everything else as zero. And hopefully these numbers are familiar to you that it has a trigger true count of plus four. In my opinion, this one is moderately vulnerable, meaning there are some advantage players out there who will attack this one on its own. Not in, It doesn't even need to be in combination with other side bets. All right. The next one is the Golden Eight, or otherwise known as the Panda Eight in old days when it was part of Easy Baccarat. Again, this is well known. It has a higher house edge. The card counting system to beat it is quite complicated struggle uh, to use something like this. It has a high trigger uh, true count, a very kind of lowish number for units one per 100 hands. So I would count this one as having low vulnerability to card counting. The next one up is the Heavenly Nine, and this is a new side bet to me. I've never seen this one before, but this is part of the five treasures. And this wins if the player or the banker has a three card total of nine. So if one of them does and the other one doesn't have a three card total of nine, then it pays 10 to one. If they both have three card totals of nine, that seems like a pretty unlikely thing to have happen. You get a 75 to one payout. Again, kind of a strongish house edge, and um, the card counting system for this, you can look at this again from left to right when I have these card counting systems, that's ace, two, three, four, and so on, nine, and then the four zero-valued cards, 10, jack, queen, and king, are on the far right under parenthesis with their tags. Again, like the panda eight, the golden eight, this has what I consider to be a low vulnerability to card counting. Now we get to the big one. This is the big new one that really, in my opinion, makes this whole uh, collection very vulnerable to card counting. And this is called the Blazing Sevens. And this wins if the player and banker have a total of seven using the same number of cards. So this will be a seven, seven tie, right? So first of all, it's a variation on the tie bet. And it's a tie where either it is a two card tie so both sides have two or it's a three card tie. Both sides have three. So when you look at this, what you see is that the sevens have a tag of minus six, right? So of course they do. Whereas eights and nines, we're glad to get rid of eights and nines. Why? Because we want to get to that third card and eights and nines tend to give us a natural, right? So it stops the hand dead. At any rate, a relatively low trigger count of plus four and look at that units one per 100 hands. That's really high. Winning two units per 100 hands is a very vulnerable side bet. So this would easily be attacked all by itself if it was on a game, not even in combination of others. So definitely this is one you wanna watch out for. So 
Now what we want to look at is the cover all side bet. And so this one will win if any one of the previous four wins. So it's not really a side bet all by itself. It's just sort of a combination of the previous ones. It pays six to one, has a house edge of 2.966%. But check this out. The units won per 100 hands on this. Because really it has such a low house edge, it has a very low trigger true count. We're looking at something comparable to the Dragon 7 Fortune 7 and having moderate vulnerability. So those are the five side bets in the five treasures. And in my opinion, what really makes this especially vulnerable is team play. So we're looking at um, a team of three players who are going to work together to target the three most vulnerable side bets in this collection. Each player can count their particular side bet. Now in Bakra, of course, you can have a scorecard, which makes counting considerably easier. And so what we'll do is we'll have three players at the table. One will count the Fortune 7, one will count the Blazing 7s, and one will count the Cover All. And then when any one of those three players makes their bet, the other two will make that same bet. So effectively, it's like having three players simultaneously counting all three side bets. So when we do the math on that, we see that, and what I want to do is break this down to a $100 wager, just to sort of formalize this in a way where you can uh, see exactly how this is working. What we'll do is say, okay, when the player says, I have the edge, they will make a $100 wager on that side bet, and their other two people also will. And when you don't have the edge, you don't make the side bet, right? So in that way, if we go $100, and 100 hands are played. So by 100 hands played, I don't mean 100 wagers, I just mean 100 hands of Bakra are played. Then here's the rough win rate for that team. Each player on the team will win $73.40 on average from the Fortune 7, 205 from the Blazing 7, 68.80 from Coverall. So each teammate will make about $347 per 100 hands. And the total team return is going to be a little bit over $1,000 every 100 hands. This is with $100 wagers. That is definitely in the high vulnerability framework. And if we look at five players, so we're going to play all five of these wagers, then each teammate is going to make about $400 per 100 hands. And the entire team of five will make a little bit over $2,000 every hundred hands. So this is definitely a high vulnerability. This is something that you need to be paying attention to. So what I have is I've created a spreadsheet that I want to share with you. This spreadsheet allows you to actually compute the edges on the fly. So let me let me just give you a little demonstration of this thing so you can actually see how it works. For example, we might see an ace a four, a six, and an eight come out after the first shoe or first hand. I don't know. Let's just see what happens. We can compute all and it will change the edges for those side bets. So you see we have the side bets here and we have the main game wagers here. So you can really see everything happening in the game at the same time. And as things go along, you can just keep track of what cards have been played and and Whenever you feel like it, you can just hit compute all and it will tell you the current edge. You can also just put in some numbers like 20 and 14. So you don't necessarily have to hit these bu buttons over and over again. And again, anytime you want to compute, just hit compute all. You can also change the number of decks and hit compute all and it'll work on, off of a, a fewer decks with those number of cards. And at any time you can reset the shoe and you might want to just change that back to eight as well. So that is the spreadsheet. Hopefully you will find that helpful as you're going through um, your evaluation. So I want to give you some recommendations now for how to protect this particular side collection of side bets. So first of all, watch for wagers late in the shoe. So this is just classic card counting stuff, right? People are going to be counting and tracking these wagers and you're going to have more volatility towards the end of the shoe so that's what you want to watch out for watch for a group of players making the same wagers together that really indicates team play 
watch for odd score keeping. So look at the score sheets, right? Are these, is it something you don't recognize? Are they keeping track of the cards in a way that will allow them to, to translate that into account? Especially watch Blazing Sevens. It has a, a especially high vulnerability of over two units per hundred hands. Watch for wagers on the side bet that are large compared to the main wager. Your typical player will bet large main and may make a small side bet. People who are exploiting side bets want to keep their losses, their uh, expected losses on the main game as low as possible. So they will bet low on the main and large on the side bet. Use the software to confirm betting correlation. So I, I'm offering this side bet to you, uh, the software to you, and this is one example, or you could create your own if you like. Train the key personnel in your organization on this vulnerability. And last, and, and definitely you don't want to do this unless you can't do any of the previous things, which is to increase the cut card depth so that you're simply not dealing as many cards out of the shoe. What you really want is hands per hour and anything that takes away from that as in putting in a new shoe, shuffling the cards, and so on. It's going to slow down the game and make it less profitable overall. So here is my website. Um, that is advancedadvantageplay.com. And you simply go to downloads right here, and you can find everything you want in the Bakra calculators section. You'll find this particular one right down here, Bakra Five Treasures Edge Calculator. When you download this, be aware that it will come in a zip file, so you'll have to unzip it, and then it's a macro-driven uh, Excel spreadsheet, so you'll have to enable macros. Your computer might not like zip files, and it might not like macros, so you might have to work with the security features of your computer to get this particular program to work for you. This is my first video in a long time, but I am kind of inspired to create a few more. Hopefully this has been helpful to you. What I would really appreciate is if you could like this video and subscribe to my channel and even, hey, share it with somebody else that you think it might be interesting to. All right, everyone, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.